Hey Raghunath, tell everyone about our Patreon community. Sure, Kostuba. The Wisdom of the Sages Patreon community is an incredible online yoga resource. If you like the type of yoga wisdom and culture we share on the show, then our Patreon community is a great next step. This is a listener-supported podcast, and any level of sponsorship will unlock a wide range of live and archive classes, talks, and even workshops. Raghunath teaches, I teach, and we have a host of other excellent teachers on topics ranging from yoga philosophy, asana classes, storytelling, Ayurveda, kirtan, cooking, meditation, and a lot more. We even have an incredible online bhakti 12-step recovery group. So if you want to check it out, go to patreon.com slash wisdom of the sages. All right, let's get it on. Live from Super Soul Farm, this is Wisdom of the Sages, a daily yoga podcast with your host, Raghunath, and co-host and senior educator at the Bhakti Center, New York, Kastuba Das. Welcome to the show, everybody. Welcome to Monday. Whew. Yes, it was going to be rock and roll quote week. Sorry. Kastuba said there <laughs> are try. no good rock and roll I bands out that. there can live up my spiritual caliber. I didn't say And I that. quoted Kansas, dust in the wind. And I said that was and obvious. Said, you, it was obvious, obvious Raghu. That's yeah. everyone's going to go there. Yeah. Where is my Kansas quote? You know, I, I thought, I was thinking when I heard that dust in the wind, I said, maybe they were good. Maybe maybe I was just like, as a kid, <laughs> I was just like being um, into my punk rock thing and just not allowing myself to fully open up to it. Did you go back and listen to them? I'm well, give them another chance. Because then I saw, what last week when I was trying to dig up the Herman Hess stuff, I saw that Kansas wrote a song about that book, Narcissus and Goldman. And oh, really? so I went back to listen to that. Yeah. And I realized why I never liked Kansas in the first place. But, I closed my eyes only for a moment in the moment. Oh, you had to go and do it. Look at this. Guy. All my dreams <laughs> passed before my eyes. A curiosity. Dust in the wind. All we are Kastuba is dust in the wind. Same old song. Just a drop of water in an endless sea. All we do crumbles to the ground, though we, we refuse, refuse to see. To see. Dust in the wind. Dust in the wind. That's what we are. This is like this is like Lord Jaitanya talking. Not quite, but this it's is like good. A, it's good. I admit it's a good lyric. And then the final line. Now don't hang on. Nothing lasts forever but the earth and sky. And actually, they don't last either. According <laughs> to the Bhagavatam cycle, <laughs> <laughs> it slips away, and all your money won't another a minute, minute buy. buy. Well, that's Dust coming straight out of where, where is that? You know, uh, is that? Chanyuka or, or someone that's that had that statement, right? That, yeah, yeah, that statement like time is the most precious thing because you can't buy a minute of it back. You can't, you can't purchase it back. I mean, my mind goes to, OK, but there's always another one right around the corner. <laughs> Isn't that that's true? right? Yeah. Yeah. But uh, I understand. It's a good point. I, I think that's a nice like Zeppelin too. wasn't spiritual. Were they spiritual? I, never I think they were like kind one. of dark spiritual. Like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> into that. Uh... What about Bob Dylan? But Bob Bob Dylan, I'm not oh, well, the later not, Bob Dylan. He, of when stuff, Chris, just... You got to serve somebody. Oh, you, yes, it might be I mean, the devil, but it might be the Lord. Right. But you, you got to serve this is somebody. We're not going to all the most cliche kind of stuff. It's like, yeah, obviously Bob Dylan wrote oh, some that's Christmas like songs. Saying like, you know. Yeah, it's cliche. Of course it is. It, it's, <laughs> okay. It's, it's rock and roll cliche. All right. But, let's so let's have our announcements, Raghunath, and then we'll go get to today's nugget, real nugget, okay? And I'm not saying that there's not those great are real spiritual nuggets. lyrics out there. Those are nuggets. nuggets. You got By the way, you got to serve somebody. It might be the devil or it might be the Lord. That's what we always say. It you got to either like upgrade. You got to degrade. You want to choose Maya or you want to choose Krishna. So those are your two nuggets that you just exhausted now. From from the world of rock and roll. We need Parmananda. I just don't know lyrics. Parmananda is, you know, lyrics to every song, Parmananda. If you got some good spiritual lyrics, we'll take punk, hardcore, hip hop, boy bands, or rock and roll. Parmananda. Otherwise, it's going to be Henry David Thoreau week. Okay. <laughs> <Around here. laughs> okay. 
G to G live just coaching. Just accept it, Anybody, just, anybody, just send him to Mara quick. Embrace, embrace because, those Henry David um, Thoreau. Because Henry David Thoreau is a little, if you talk about cliche, he's a little cliche. Devotees quote him all the time. Do they? Yeah, I just look like the back what, of the name Bhagavad one Gita. Quote. Name one. Oh, that's like a blurb about every the Bhagavad morning Gita. I bathe like, my no, intellect in the, every morning I bathe oh, my God, intellect God. in the... Stupendous <laughs> cosmological wisdom of Stupendous the Bhagavad cosmological Gita, in which comparison to which our modern the day Bhagavad something Gita. seems petty and something small or something like that. And did you hear Boy G And Oh, you sent me that link. A Boy George is like talking about Radhakund. Yeah, George. Boy George just performed at the Bhaktivedanta Manor. Uh, oh, like that's where that was. Yesterday or the day before or something like that, yeah. What? And he had a big set of shirts Bhagavatam. You saw that? They gave him a set yeah. of Bhagavatam and he's holding that thing up. How about this one? Karma, 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 karma. <laughs> chameleon. Karma, chameleon. <laughs> you come and, and you, you go. go. You come and you go. Boom. Nothing is easy again. when you... <laughs> what is it? No, nothing is easy when you something... Your dreams? Look, look, Henry's on Google right now trying to find trying to find rock and roll lyrics. Okay. Everybody's madly Let's searching. Let's move web. on to the announcements. Announcements, Mara. By the way, me and Mara after the Saber retreat, um, Gus got injured and we yeah. went to the did you know they have pet emergency rooms? I we suppose went they to would the need pet them. emergency room. Huh? I suppose they're needed, yeah. you know. They are needed. They are needed. Yeah. They didn't do that. They didn't do that when we were little. No one took care of animals. They did too. They're they veterinarians. They didn't, yeah, but everything, everything happened to a dog, at least maybe in our family. We were like, okay, we got to put the dog to sleep. Yeah. That's, that's what the, that's what the, the that was the only option. Is the dog going to get better? No, we're putting him to sleep. I said, like, what does that mean? It sounds so sweet. <laughs> we're rejecting him. going to lie him down. That's how they, all my dogs, I had, all my pets die. They all got put to sleep. That's how they all died. There was no like, you know, emergency dog surgery. As far as I know, that there must have been some something historically that happened where they started like trying to fix dogs. Okay, are, so, is, are you working towards something with this? Uh, no, I'm just saying okay, we didn't sleep. Let's go to the we didn't sleep, please. and we slept for two hours last night. Okay, Mara. Uh, we back to your back to your recovery group meetings today at one and nine thirty p.m. One and nine thirty p.m. Okay. Yes. All right, are you ready for the What's nugget? Now, I want you to – now, don't be unenthusiastic about this nugget just because it's not your rock and roll one, Roganath. I want you to try to get into it. I want you to try to appreciate it. I want you to elaborate on it and, and share your own insights. Okay. Let me hear this. Let me hear this. From Henry David Thoreau. Oh. I've got to say it. Okay. <laughs> I can say it if you want. I was like, let them just, we're both <laughs> waiting for each other to say it. Okay, ready? This is uh, um, nature, nature abhors a vacuum. And if I can only walk with sufficient carelessness, I'm sure to be filled. Oh. Dust in the wind. <laughs> Nature what abhors a vacuum. <laughs> and if I mean? can only walk with sufficient carelessness, I am sure to be filled. Now, I believe the carelessness here isn't the way that we use it in a modern way. Like careless means... I mean, sort of like footloose and fancy. I right? think careless like sort of means... I think what he means by careless means like if I can let go of the petty worries that absorb my mind or the petty sure. topics. Yeah, I care about this. I care it's about that. The good careless... Yeah, this is a good careless, where it's, in other words, the things that aren't so important, they're not um, dominating my thoughts. So if I could just kind of empty myself of all of that, then nature's going to be speaking to me left and right. You know, it's just like, it's like we're moving around the world like all dull, right? We're moving around like nature speaking to us. And when I say nature, I mean, I think Henry David Thoreau is speaking about like being out in the forest, nature, which... Yeah, there's definitely lessons there for sure. But I think you could expand it. To like I heard he didn't even spend that much time in the forest. You know that? <laughs> okay. He's a I heard frog. it was like a month or something. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, that's all it takes. If you're, if he was sufficiently careless, he would have gotten filled up in that month. Or whatever. Nature abhors a vacuum. It's, okay. But, but my point is like when we speak about nature, like Prakriti, right? Like material nature, like all the material energy, that's speaking to us at every moment too, isn't it? 
just like every mm -hmm. moment like you took Gus to the to the to the doctor like that's the movings of material nature Gus is getting old or you know it's speaking to you if you're sufficiently careless right if you're if you're not if your mind and, and, and isn't absorbed constantly in thoughts of what I need to be happy or what I have to change or this petty thing or that I'm upset about this. Or what okay. this person said. I'm getting that, it. I get this now. Okay. I get it. It finally right. clicked. <laughs> okay. Nature pours in a vacuum. Yes. So I just nature. came from a save. I just came from a save a weekend. Everyone's cleaning and chopping and building. You know, we made tables. So when I hear nature abhors a vacuum, it's like, yeah, I abhor a vacuum also. That noise, the dust collecting. <laughs> no, we're gonna get it, get it. Vacuum. Yeah, so in other words, nature's gonna fill you up. If you can if you can kind of empty yourself up a little bit about the petty cares that you have in life, the things that aren't so important that we think are if you can empty yourself of that, let go of that, right? Then Everywhere you turn, I, and I, I'm going to expand this beyond just like, again, the forest kind of nature and say all oh, material nature, like everything that's moving around us is going to speak to us. It's going to, it's going to, uh, there's all kind of lessons there to learn and we're just not open to them. it. So how dull are we when we're walking around, when we're walking around? It's like the whole thing's supposed to be speaking to us at every moment. Like every movement of the material energy has a message in it for us, right? About sure. who we are and what our potential is and, and so on. And, uh, but mostly we walk around kind of dull because we're not sufficiently careless. All right. It is good. I got to be a little more careless. <laughs> I'm now careful with it's that. Kastuba told me to be careless. <laughs> and he's like uh, <laughs> 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 driving his car into people. <laughs> it's a nice, it's a nice, uh, actually, it's a nice uh, phrase careless, careless, free of care. Yeah. Okay. Carefree. Careful. But even when we say carefree, you know, we mean something a little different, I think. Yeah. All right, right my friend. You like that? We'll see okay. if we can come up with yeah. some more Henry David Thoreau stuff. Pretty good. What do you know about Henry David Thoreau, Rogan? Besides that, he was um, in terms of... I know he was inspired by... The you know, Gandhi was inspired by him. But he was inspired by Gita. You know, all these yeah, people were inspired by the yeah. East, and they get all the credit. Emerson, Thoreau... You, the, you, the, you said this the other day, like they don't give the credit, but at the same time, just a few minutes ago, you spoke about how he no, it's gave the credit world, to the Bhagavad Gita. The, no, they're giving credit to Bhagavad Gita, but it's sort of like, yeah, I get this inspiration for the Bhagavad Gita, but the world, we use them as the gold standard of transcendental poetry and transcendental authors, but why not just go right to the source? Well, both are, That's you know, what I'm saying. I, mean, I, I agree with you. Let's get, go to the source. Anyway. Yeah. All right. You ready for Bhagavatam? Yeah. Narayanam namaskritam naram chayva narotamam devim sarasvatim vyasam dato jayam madirayat. Before we start in the Srimad Bhagavatam, which is our very means of conquest, one should offer respectful obeisances to the Supreme Lord Narayan. Unto Nara Narayan Rishi, the supermost human being. Unto Mother Saraswati, the goddess of learning. And to Srila Vyasa Dev, the author. Nasta prayeshva badreshu nicham bhagavat sevaya. Bhagavati Uttama Shloke Bhakti Urbhavati Naishtaki by regular attendance in classes in the Bhagavatam and by rendering service to the pure devotee. All that is troublesome in the heart will become eradicated. And loving service to the Supreme Lord who is praised with transcendental songs will be established as an irrevocable fact. Om Jnana Timarandasya Jnana Jnana Shalakaya Chaksurun Militam Yena Tasmaya Shri Gurave Namaha I was born in the darkness of ignorance. My teachers are opening my eyes with the torchlight of knowledge. Bow from obeisances at their lotus feet. Reading from Srimad Bhagavatam, uh, Canto 4, Chapter 18. Preach entitled, text one, entitled, Preachu Maharaj Milks the Earth Planet. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> a little pregnant pause there. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's trying to picture that. I'm like, yeah, you milk, milk the earth plant. <laughs> you milk anything. Yeah. So anyway, Sounds in the last last chapter, the Earth somehow, you know, again, you know, um, maybe we can get into this a bit today. But you know, in my Oxford studies, some interesting stuff is coming up for that. I'm studying oh, in Oxford now. <laughs> you know about that? Yeah, I've heard your study. <laughs> you're, you're envious. I've heard your studying with the monocle. <laughs> uh, 
No, but uh, we don't need no education. We don't need your thought control, Kostuba. All right, <laughs> go on. So you know who our teacher was was Radhika Raman. You know Ravi Gupta, uh, Professor oh, Ravi Gupta. Radhika Raman. You know where he lives, Radhika Raman? He lives in Utah. He lives in Evansville with all these other Zoomers. I thought he lives in Utah. Arum, Arumar and he lives with he Arumar lives there. and Jenny Yoga. No, he's in he Utah. lives right near there. I think you're wrong. You think I'm right? I think you're wrong. I think you're way off. Yeah. In so he was case, a little kid when we were young. When we were young, genius. He was this. He was like this, like child. You know, there was a Krishna magazine, the Krishna Conscious magazine that came out, and he was one of the contributing writers every month. And he was only a child. He was like skipping grade, sharp, Indian homeschooled child, like in college when he was like eleven or something like that, or something. Yeah, it was one of these child prodigy (laughs) devotee kids. Yeah, much smarter than me <laughs> when he was like eight. He started college at eleven. So he started I'm college sure at eleven. I'm not sure if it was. I'm just throwing that out there. But it was like somehow he's very young and he was in college. I know that. Anyway, so any- now he's like this professor, and he's like a master Bhagavad Gita. I tried to get him on the show. He was like, "I'm busy." I think he said something like, "I'm busy." <laughs> I'm busy. I'm yeah, gonna. I try think it. I might be making that up. I think we got to. Why don't you try to get him on the show? Yeah, I think we need to do that. Well, he's because you know we didn't even talk about Veda Star. What do you think about Veda Star's story? Veda Sar is if you, if you guys, if you didn't hear yesterday's interview day, you got to go back and listen to Veda Sar. I mean, first of all, just seeing that beauty, and you got to watch it on YouTube. Do not listen to it on the podcast. You got to watch it on YouTube. First of all, the man is beautiful. He's just got like this beautiful face of an angel. And I was <laughs> like, oh my God. And then I'm talking, hey, everybody. And he just goes, yeah, slow it down. down. He like slowed me down, put me in like slow gear. Yeah, I love him. <laughs> he he does he does you love him. He does have like some people I love just him. you know you 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 spend a little time with someone you want to be a little bit more like them. You know, it's like he's kind of like I'm just moving through the world and I just got this big open heart and I have this my whole bhakti philosophy that I'm living in every moment and I don't seem to be in any anxiety and I'm kind of compassionate towards everyone and. Nothing is a problem. He's kind of, you know, he's got that um, real sadhu kind of energy about him for sure. As I tell my students, you just chant one round, but you chant it really slow and really <laughs> good. You hold those beads to your heart, Raghunath, and just chant that one round. Yeah. You're like, I've never chanted a round like that. <laughs> All these years. <laughs> you mean I can't just rattle rattle them off? <laughs> so, in any case, uh, uh, Radhika Raman Prabhu, professor. Right. Okay. So, so, last week our studies were all about the Bhagavatam. Right? It's it's all about Gaudiya Vaishnava studies. So, it's all about the lineage that we're in. But specifically, last week was about Bhagavatam. And I think what I'm what I'll say now is going to relate. Maybe we'll come back to it as we start to read, but relate to what we're reading today. Because he made this point. You ready? Yep. See, the Bhagavatam is, we see it in our lineage, we see it as like the the completion of all of Vyasadeva's works, right? It's like he wrote the Vedas, he wrote the Upanishads, he wrote the Mahabharata with the Bhagavad Gita, the Vedanta Sutra, which is kind of a summary of the Vedantic knowledge. And then the Puranas, which are all these collections of stories. And the Puranas, you know, they're pointing to different deities. If you read the Shiva Purana, it's going to seem like, oh, Shiva is the supreme, you know. Mm. And if, you know, if you read the, the Devi, um, you know, the, the works, you know, directed towards her, you're going to think, oh, you know, this it's goddess supreme. is the supreme. Um, which is a really fascinating idea because, like, even in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says that if someone believes in, in the Devas, has faith in them, what does he say? You go to them. Well, he says you go to them, but he also says I'll increase that faith. I'll, like, you know, yeah, I'll, I'll right? give you faith in that. He'll I'll give, give you, you good in information to give you faith in that. And then you'll go to them. Yeah. And which is interesting. Well, Krishna also says other things about the demigods as well. He does. But but like um, we had a question over the weekend, right, on Saturday that was like saying, um, why are there so many pet? You got hiccups? What's going on there, Mayor? She's got the sneezies. The like sneezies. OK. Um, but uh, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. So, so we had a question over the weekend, was, which was like, why are there so many paths? You know, like, why, 
there's Christianity over here, there's this path, there's that path. And, but even within like Vyasadeva's works, right, one sage, there's like so many paths and so many gods and goddesses and like how do you make sense of it all, you know? And it seems to be that in one sense, you know, life is meant to be a riddle, right? And, and, and that, that there's all of the, kind of like what we want, we get, right? If you want, if you want a goddess or a god to give you wealth, well, that's there. And that's a higher stage than like being completely oblivious to like everything that's being handed to you in, in life, you know? And yeah. so if you have faith in that, Krishna says, if that's what you want and if that's where you're at, then let it be. Go for it. I'm not like this jealous God that's going to cut you down or something like that, right? Like that's all right. And, and, but, but there's, and so kind of what, what working out our spiritual path is, is like where do we find the most developed path? Like the path that will lead to the deep, the fullest blossoming, right? It's not that the other paths are wrong but that there's something deep is is there something deeper you know there's that fascinating conversation in the chaitanya charitamrita between can you think of what i'm thinking raghunath because some where you always go deeper go further take oh yeah further. ramananda ramananda roy and lord chaitanya with ramananda roy and lord chaitanya with the atma rama verse the atma, that's part yeah but it was well the atma rama verse plays out with um Sovereign bone but the chari and then later okay. Sorry, but, okay 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 when it's just it went uh, yes He's asking he says, him to go, go deeper, go deeper, tell me, go yeah, deeper. Tell me what life and, is all about. And the beautiful part of this is he goes through the entire like Vedic system, exactly. very important things. Yeah. But it, it also shows this part of the Chaitanya Charitamrita shows the nuances of spiritual evolution. It's not just like you're going to heaven and you, oh, my friend, are going to hell. It's like the nuances of spiritual evolution. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, well, and these things, and, when you hear that, you realize this is so weighty what i'm studying here <laughs> so, so epic this goes so deep <laughs> and, and and but yeah and i connect that that conversation with what we're just discussing right now because it's like it's not you know a lot of our religious thought that we're fed particularly you know growing up in the west is like this is right this is entirely right and this is everything and just believe it and everything is you're saved and mm. and if you don't believe exactly this and you believe anything else you're on the wrong path you're destined to hell you, you know you right it's whereas like the in general eastern thought is more like here's like a whole smorgasbord of related paths and you know, people interpret them in different ways, but the way that we understand is that some are more developed. And it's there's a term uh, when I was speaking to uh, Professor Edwin Bryant the other day. Yeah. He so, used this term, uh, what is it? A high, hierarchical inclusivism, right? It's like, mm -hmm. it's not excluding any of these, but it's putting them in a hierarchy. So like you can go higher, you can go higher, you can go still higher, you know, like the path, the different paths, there's a validity to them and a value in all of them, but some are more developed than others. And and so it's when, when Sri Chaitanya was talking to Ramananda Roy, it was, it was this beautiful exchange where like Sri Chaitanya is empowering him to speak truth, right? And acquiring from him. Okay. And, and, and he says, you know, like, well, tell me what's the meaning of life? What's it all about? And he, and he begins to speak from Bhagavad Gita, you know? If you follow all your duties in life, you know, auspiciousness is coming from that. Okay, that's nice and it's true, but right. tell me it's something true, more. It's nice, it's spiritual, yeah. it's deep. Do all your duties, act appropriately, you know, put in your good karma, your good effort, your good work in this world. Yeah, and and certainly that's, there's truth to that, but that's not the highest revelation, you know, so what's higher than that? And then he goes through other ideas in the Bhagavad Gita, you know, um, uh, whatever you do, make it an offering unto me. Okay, that's okay, that's yes, pretty that's, good. That's pretty yeah, good. Yeah. That's deep. We even say we quote that all the time. <laughs> yeah, right. uh, but that's not enough. I want more. Yeah, yeah. And so it goes deeper, and then it starts to get into pure bhakti and higher levels of it, and then more esoteric levels of it, until he finally gets to the the very peak. You know, there's different levels of bhakti, and then there's the the the, the, the intimate love of the residents of Vrindavan, and then there's the love of the gopis, and then there's the love of Srimati Radharani, which is like he's like okay now we're getting something you know he's like take it higher <laughs> higher higher <laughs> yeah. and, and so uh, yeah at one point in that conversation is okay now you're getting into the territory that i want to get into but still go further you know right and so you have th this vast teachings um a lot of it is teachings of dharma that come out of it right but what what uh the point that i, I really appreciated that um radhi Kraman prabhu was making was he he said it like this 
he said that the Bhagavatam is relentless. Okay, in, in other words, you, we see the Bhagavatam as this is the book that's going to clear everything up, <laughs> right? This is the book mm. that's going to put everything in perspective, get, put every line everything up in the in the you know in on the ladder of each step up, um, and, and help you understand and make sense of it all. Why are there teachings that are teaching on this level? And they seem like everything we're going to clear it all up. And he says, so you get to the Bhagavatam, and it has this relentless focus. And that relentless focus is it kind of takes all the Dharma from the earlier texts, like the, the Vedas. Yeah. And it kind of reverses it. It's kind of like, in other words, if you read the, the Vedas, it's going gonna, it's gonna to give you like a lot of um, important Dharmic ideas, you know, about like, say, Varnashra and Dharma, that everyone has a different role to play in society. And there's a lot of duties that you have according to that. And if you follow those duties, it brings about auspiciousness. And so then a lot is invested in encouraging people to be dharmic in that way and follow this, you know, and then, you know, ideas about gender, ideas about age. Um, it, it, what the Bhagavatam comes and, comes and does is it says, it flips it all. So like in the Bhagavatam, when it, you know, you have, where, whereas like in, in the ancient Vedas, it's more about like the men or the, the it's more patriarchal the, and the men are the leaders. In the Bhagavatam, you have women instructing men. You know, it gets flipped. Hmm. You know, it, generally, like, you know, age is considered um, important, you know, and the elderly are respected. But in Bhavatam, you know, you got little Prahlad becomes the teacher, you know. Hmm. Um, little Dhruva becomes like the... The, the guru. The, the guru, yeah. You know, in my children of, are my My children are my gurus, Kusuma. <laughs> there you go, Ramina. <laughs> There's another little nugget for you. <laughs> <laughs> And then, you know, in terms of Varnashram Dharma, where like the Brahmanas are... are um, Humiliated the, by, the, the, by the leaders. By the... In, yeah, in Bhagavatam, yeah, like the, their wives are telling you guys, you're missing the whole point, you know, or at least through their example, they're proving. It's, 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 not, it's not always, you know, the, the Brahmanas. Or, or even like when you have the gods and, the, you know, the, the Sures and the Asuras, the gods and the demons... You know, in the early Vedic literature, like it's kind of clear the gods are the good ones and the demons are the bad ones. But in the Bhagavatam, you have demons, including Prahlad, who's born in a demoniac lineage, and Vritrasura, right? Who mm. actually, they be, they're more devoted and more elevated than Indra, the king of heaven, who's so dharmic, you know? Mm. And, and, um, and, and so like in this way, the point is why why is the younger, you know, why, you know, how, how do you get all these dharmic kind of like flips? Because what it's showing is that what's the, the essential thing, the main thing that we need to keep the main thing is actually one's devotion, right? If one has devotion to God, that, that overrides all other practical considerations. You know, so, it's interesting because there is a leap of faith. If you really sort of like try to study this objectively, suppose we were not into interested in bhakti, we're just going to a university. Yeah. What they'll, the academia will say is, oh, yeah, there's a Vyasa day, but there's many Vyasas. Vyasa means like the editor. And so there's many Vyasas and, um, you know, all these uh, great scriptures were at all different times. And um, we should understand that one to be higher. This is just a plethora of spiritual writing. And if you have that, you'll be if you if you accept that, you'll be ultimately confused with all these teachings. They all just work against each other. But if you can take this little leap of faith, and what's that leap of faith is just hearing what all the like like what Vyasadeva says in the Bhagavatam, yeah. um, that that there is actually one Vyasadeva, and Vyas actually, this is his mature realization. This is like the keystone. This is like the uh, the magic code to yeah. enter into the vault of all Vedic knowledge. Hmm, I right. like that. The oh. key, the combination <laughs> to enter the vault of all Vedic knowledge. And I tell you, if you just accept that, if your one little leap of faith is accept what accept v what Vyasa Dave says as true, everything will make sense. Everything will be in perspective. All these Vedic teachings, which sometimes appear opposing. You know, I read yeah. this book that said Shiva Supreme. I read this book that said Kali Supreme. I read this book that said Krishna Supreme. And if you read this, it'll explain how they fit together. When you read the Bhagavatam, it's not trying to pin, you know, one subsect against another subsect, some niche version of, you know, Hinduism versus another niche version of Hinduism. What it's trying to do is zoom, zoom out of the bigger picture. And Vyasadeva said, just, if you just 
hear what Viasa Dave says and try to speculate, well, that couldn't have been him because these obviously were before he was alive because he can't live that long. I got news for you. He's still alive. Viasa Dave <laughs> is still alive, up. people. <laughs> He's a Shiran Jiva. Hanuman's still out there doing his thing. You just don't see him because our eyes aren't pure. Our eyes aren't clean. All right. There you go. What do you think of that? I, I if think you just perfect, this is right the right leap right. of faith that's important. Okay, take a Hanuman leap of faith, but Ooh. but it does start all to snap together. You know, if if you try to see it through this, you know, and this is what you know. The idea is that Sri Chaitanya, you have these traditions that are coming down for for many 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 centuries, and you can see a development there. You know, from the Vedic age where the karmic idea is more emphasized. You know, follow the Dharma. And you'll experience, you know, material well-being, you know, that's encouraged. And then the Upanishadic, you know, from from there you go into like Buddhism and then Shankar's teachings, which are like um, more spiritual, but lacking a personal understanding of God, lacking ultimate personal honestly, deity. A, 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 yeah, a, lacking love as an element, uh, you know, an important element. Um, and then you have like the the Vaishnava um, traditions and the Bhakti traditions that then later develop in response to that. It's it's all going back to the same literature, but it's drawing out a deeper and deeper, it's churning it more, churning it more, churning it more. Then you get, you know, to 500 years ago and you have Sri Chaitanya and, and Vallabha and, you know, all your kind of stars of the Bhakti movement, you know, your Mirabais, your poets, your songwriters and all that. But Sura Das. Sura Das, thank you. <laughs> and, and so, so, uh, then you have Sri Chaitanya, who, you know, again, in our lineage, we accept that Krishna came back again. He came back to show how to, to embody bhakti, right? He came, and, and not only that, to, to reveal the still more fully blossomed, you know, kind of um, spiritual idea, right? That, mm. that divine love is, it not only is love the highest principle, as, you know, taught by, you know, the previous Vaishnava Acharyas, but the intimate love of Vrindavan, right? Where you forget mm. that God is God. And you love God with an intimacy like a friend or like a child or like a lover, that this is still something more more uh, divine and, 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 and still higher. And that's why Sri Chaitanya is saying to Ramana the word, go further, right? Go further, take mm. it further. And so 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 what we have when we get to the Bhagavatam is it's revealing all of that, you know. But it, and now it's doing two things. It's it's validating all the Dharma from the past. But it's saying, but if you look, get lost in that, the, the whole point of all that dharma, of all the different social roles and so on, the whole point of that is it's going to give you a foundation through which you can develop this higher, deeply spiritual love. And if in the name of that dharma, you become hardened in any way, well, then you lost the whole point. And so Bhagavatam is going to show you again and again, you know, even the demon is, the, if the demon is a devotee, then the demon's higher than, than you know, than, than, than the Brahmana. follower of Varna, than the Brahmana. Yeah, right. And, and and so that's that's kind of the message that's coming through. So now we're hearing in this chapter, to bring it all back, now we're hearing in this chapter that there's this, there's this dharmic, karmic, uh, you know, idea, you know, it's a very Vedic idea that the Bhagavatam is speaking to here. And that is that the demigods or goddesses have a duty to perform in relation to the people, the earthlings, right? Is that if the people are doing their sacrifice, in other words, if they're ritualistically expressing their gratitude to the god or the goddesses, then mm -hmm. it's the duty of the, the earth to supply food and supply grains and, and so on. And that hasn't happened. And that's why the king has stepped up there and saying, we need to restore this kind of cosmic order right? Everybody's meant to play the role. You're not playing your role, Mother Earth. And I'm here to demand that you do. Mm. And so now the Earth is going to start to speak back, right? And that's, that's what we're going to, she's got, she's got some very interesting things to say here too. Let's see what you got to say, Mother Earth. The great Saint Maitreya continued to address Vidura. My dear Vidura, at that time, after the planet Earth finished her prayers, King Pritu was still not pacified and his lips trembled in great anger. Although the planet Earth was frightened, she made up her mind and began to speak as follows in order to convince the king. Okay. My dear Lord, please pacify your anger completely and hear patiently whatever I submit before you. Please turn your kind attention to this. I may be very poor, but a learned man takes the essence of knowledge from all places 
just as a bumblebee collects honey from each and every flower. Yo, boy, right there, Raghunath. How about that lesson, right? Like it. Lucky. No, I mean, I think, that, she, again, she says, please turn your kind attention to this. I may be very poor, and by poor, I don't think she means, she, she means like in terms of like, um, not that, not that, financially not that intelligent. Yeah, I'm poor. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know much, so much, but I here's what I do yeah. know. Yeah, but a learned person. This is really this is a principle, right? We need to learn to live our lives according to principles. So she says, a learned person takes the essence of knowledge from all places, just as a bumblebee collects honey from each and every flower. And that's a principle that I've never seen, like it currently, and you know, again, we're going to shift it to the political conversation. But n nowadays you get ideas like um, that this person, because of their race, because of their gender, we, we can't hear from them, right? Whatever they say. Not only no that, way. because of a person who was, we once considered great 200 years ago, and he said something very weighty and substantial. How dare you even quote him? Because, right, right. you know, the, the we're going to hold him to a standard that we have now, no matter what he's done, no matter what she's done, we're going to hold them and pigeonhole them to something that uh, how we would look at it through today's lens would be completely wrong. Right. Um, we're going to change the name of our high school. <laughs> I mean, to me, that's like how that plays out. I mean, there's, but, but the, the principle though is wherever there's wisdom, we accept it. Right? Sure. You don't, you, if, if it's true, it's true. Let's hear what anybody has to say. This is, this is the liberal principle, actually, right? It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what gender you are. It doesn't matter what your age is. It doesn't matter where you're from. N none of these things matter. What matters is truth. And if it's truth, we're willing to hear it. And it gets kind of crazy when things get flipped upside down and we're saying, like, uh, you know, because of your experience, because of your privilege, because of your this, or because of your that, we're not even going to listen to what you have to say. It has no value. We cut it off. It's breaking, it's actually breaking the liberal principle, which is we're, it doesn't matter your gender. It doesn't matter your age. None of these things matter. Let's live by the principle, right? Yeah. So, so that, it's a principle that comes out. It's an important one within the Vedic context because the Vedic context does have these kind of social divisions and everything. Yeah, you so can say that. You can say that because you're privileged. <laughs> so, so, that, so therefore, we're hearing in Bhagavatam, right? It's make, again, it's making that point. It doesn't matter where it's coming from. Right. If it's truth, it's truth. Truth is truth. Love is love, Kostuba. Okay. Text three. three. To benefit all human society, not only in this life, but in the next, the great seers and sages have prescribed various methods conducive to the prosperity of the people in general. Okay. So it's coming from the sages. Right? The seers. Yeah, I love that the word. The seers. seers. They see yeah. things you Rishis? can't see. Is that You're not Rishi the seer. Word? I'm just the smeller and the taster. <laughs> I'm not a seer. Just a yoga. I'm a toucher. Tatpadarshibi, the seers of the truth. Yeah. Text four, one who follows the principles and instructions enjoined by the great sages of the past can utilize these instructions for practical purposes. Such a person can very easily enjoy life and pleasures. So that's right. the Vedic idea, right? That's that's yeah. coming from the the four Vedas. That if you, you sit, if you hear good instructions and you follow that lifestyle, material blessings will come your way. Yeah. Otherwise, you won't even no no. You, otherwise, the Gita, the Gita says not only will you, if you ignore it, right? Yashastrividhim utjujavartite kamakarta. You know that one. Nasukam na Nasukam na param gatim. Not only will you not get are you if you ignore these injunctions, these laws, not only will you not get the param, right? The supreme destination. Yeah, param you want to be happy. This is just how to be happy in this world. Right. Forget about heaven. You're not just going to be happy. That's why we have these principles. That's why we have these, these laws of nature. At the very least, it's trying to have you, make you have a peaceful life. We've been living crazy. We've been living in this. Uh, um, uh, what was that old cr crazy TV show where they bring people on? Jerry Springer. Oh. We've been living in like this Jerry Springer world. It's true. It is a you know Jerry what I mean? Springer world. And they, it's, it's, they just follow these basic. You don't have to live this Jerry Springer. Here's some certain values you should apply to your life and you'll have peace in this life. That's but actually, there's something analogy. there, is, and there is something much more greater. 
you know, uh, which is a supreme destination, but we're not even talking about that. Right. So, so yeah, that's a great, okay. So we got our Jerry Springer world, which is just like everybody's fighting with each other and taking pleasure and seeing people fight with one another. And right. let's bring on his new girlfriend. Whoa. <laughs> oh <my God>. <laughs> 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 then they jump out of chairs and they start. Swimming <laughs> <each other. laughs> Oh, well, that was, where that the was world, good. right? It's like some 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 executives at, at at you know um some big broadcasting corporation, you know someone's walking into their offices and presenting this idea. I got this idea. I got this We're going to take right? the lowest, most dysfunctional yeah. relationships and make it go public. And then and we're going to bring on a surprise. Yeah, right. yeah, there's, always a surprise. there's always a surprise. Oh, yeah. Let's bring out your your child that you didn't know was your child. Whoa. And these executives are sitting there and, and these guys have more money than they even know how to spend. And they're saying, <laughs> yes, we'll make more money this way. Yeah. OK, yeah, you're on you're on to something. Let's that, show that, people that, the that. glories of a Dharma going <laughs> against Dharma and how entertaining. A dharma. That's what it is. That's that's the problem with spiritual life. Um, it's it, it, it it's very smooth and blissful. It's not like these huge dramas. It's not upheavals and um, you know, uh, it, s- sattvic living is peaceful. And to yeah. a person who's living in Rajas and Thomas, right? They think that's normal. And when you have peaceful, you think, well, that's boring. Sattvic life is boring. You go to bed <laughs> early. You wake follow up the early. Rules. You follow the rules. You don't eat that much, right? You don't sleep that much. Be respectful to others. Scrape follow your the tongue. Dog Come mark. on, I'm <laughs> scraping my tongue for nobody. <laughs> so, yeah, so so it's like that. In other words, the, what the, the, these Vedic teachings are showing, like, hey, sages have given us some guidelines. Yes, and they're guidelines that are in tune with nature, right? And nature is kind of um, being directed by certain higher beings, right? And all those higher beings are ultimately kind of serving the highest being. And if you learn how to cooperate and move with that, you got to control your senses a little bit, you know, but you're going to be happier. You know, it, you, you, you got to, um, it, it will train you to be respectful, to, re- to be respectful to other human beings, to be respectful to animals, to be respectful to nature in general. If you follow these rules that the sages are laying out, these wise people, it's going to train you. Uh, and, 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 and although you may be hesitant to behave that way or, or be, you feel like it's being controlled, no, it's going to bring out the good in you. And you're going to begin to, to move through this world spontaneously with gratitude, spontaneous with de- you know, spontaneously with deeper insight. It'll be good for you. And you'll be mm-hmm. happy. And you and we say, oh, forget that. You know, like, s- screw that. But what happens is once you turn away from that, what you're moving towards is the Jerry Springer world and you don't even know it. You know, you're like, you're thinking like there's a beautiful world out there that's not a Jerry Springer world, right? That's like yeah. free of all these rules. But it's just because you've cut yourself loose from that, it's going to it's gonna degenerate and degenerate it's ca- it's and chaos. degenerate. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Don't go to Jerry Springer loca. Yeah, don't go there. And and so then you get to this absurd world where like we sit in front of screens watching pe watching people, you know, fight with each other over the most absurd kind of things. And this is rather than like contemplating wisdom and beauty and, and like we go we go here and we watch advertisements to pay for it, right? It's like it, we it's, well the, actually the next verse is gonna speak to this, right? The the, the fourth verse said that you can be happy and you can enjoy life if you just follow the instructions of the sages. What if you don't? Text number five. A foolish person who manufactures his own ways and means. A foolish person who manufactures his own ways and means through mental speculation and does not recognize the authority of the sages who lay down unimpeachable directions is simply unsuccessful again and again in his in his attempts. Mm. Prabhupada writes here at the end of the purport, he writes, materialistic men are not interested in taking directions from a liberated person, but they are very much interested in their own concocted ideas, which make them repeatedly fail in their attempts. All right. Even the people with them figured out how to get the most money, they're still miserable. Right? Even, he says, because the entire world is now following the imperfect directions of conditioned souls, humanity mm-hmm. is completely bewildered <laughs> that's you know proof flip on the jerry springer show you know it's like there you go right yeah. you got to be careful who you follow even though they might seem like they're all zipped up you got to see where they're going 
you know, it could be just to some type of like material plateau and you spend your whole life following that and it's not fulfilling the heart. So now the, the earth is kind of constructing her argument, right? To like, Hey, there's a reason why I haven't been producing grains. And it has something to do. She's going to tie it, you know. She's she's tying it into the the teachings of the sages and the whole Vedic idea, and and she, you know she's kind of making her she's making her argument that I, I'm not done anything wrong here. I'm just kind of following, you know, the way nature has everything set up. Okay. Text my dear king, six. my dear king, the seeds, roots, herbs, and grains which were created by Lord Brahma in the past, are now being used by non-devotees who are devoid of all spiritual understanding. Stop beating my grains, <laughs> non-devotees. Hands off my grains. My dear king, not only are the grains and herbs being used by non-devotees, but as far as I'm concerned, I'm not being properly maintained. Indeed, I'm being neglected by kings who are not punishing these rascals and have turned into thieves by using grains for sense gratification. Consequently, I have hidden all these seeds, which were meant for the performance of sacrifice. There was a reason why the earth wasn't mm. producing and so-called giving back. It's because the earth recognized there was no reciprocation. Mm. You, I was being used, and therefore I, 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 I clamped up. Just so you can't force somebody into a relationship. You can't manipulate them into a relationship. Relationship is a loving, reciprocating thing. And to the degree that you love, the more the, the, the person gives back in a healthy relationship with healthy people. So here we're here in the earth side of the story. And, yeah. um, and in one sense, the earth side is it's even more than like an equal relationship like that. Right. It's kind of like it's kind of is like a training relationship. Like, in other words, the, the role of the earth in this Vedic idea is that, OK, I'm going to hold out until the children kind of learn their lessons, right? And when they start to behave properly, caring for one another, being kind to one another, expressing gratitude for all the gifts that they'll be giving, then we're gonna, then the earth will put forth all that we need to be happy in this world. But not until then, I'm meant to hold it back, right? Sure, like and, a mother and, would punish the children. No, 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 yeah. no dessert, clean your room, no dessert. Yeah. Oh, and, who is this mother? This is abusive, <laughs> abusive mother, won't give us anything. Right, right. And, and, you know, if this idea will sound very naive in the, in the age that we currently live in, you know, uh, you know, the idea that all our earthly problems, you know, poverty, you know, seeing that people get enough food and shelter, even, even um, uh, like um, acts of nature, you know, hurricanes and floods and droughts, cyclones, and that, cyclones whatever it may be, tsunamis, the Vedic, the Vedic literature say that actually, if we live in harmony with nature, following these Vedic texts, actually, the whole thing starts to settle out. And, and it's because we're not that these things, you know, now you could, that's, it may sound like a naive idea. But the, if you if you fast forward to today, mm. in the world of Jerry Springer, you know, you, you have like climate change, what is climate, you know, what are they saying it's based on? Like what is causing the climate change? Ultimately, it's greed and ignorance, you know, and, and ignoring of these kind of lessons in life, right? How to be happy simply with what we've got. I don't want to eat the food that's that's kind of grown in my local area. I want to fly it in from like the I'm other side of the earth. Fly a papaya in from Mexico. Yeah, and, and it's just like one thing after another of our not being willing to live simply and appreciate what we've got that creates the automobiles that creates the oil industry that create you know it's just one thing on top of another on top of another and just keeps going further and further and further huh because imagine we had to live like that because is like all you can eat because is what you can forage from central park you'd be making oh, like uh, okay it's egg. <laughs> your wife would be like it's uh Once again egg, <laughs> egg corn pancakes again <laughs> <laughs> I don't have time. It's I don't have grass. the time for the. I don't have time for the show. I'm trying to get the tannin out of the acorns again and <laughs> making flour. <laughs> but but th this is the point, you know. It, it's that it is. It, let's let's try to view. You know, you could take a, you hear this and say, well, "This is such a naive idea. This is such a like a fairy tale of the, you know." But think about it. Slow down and think about this for a second. Okay, that the Earth has something to say, right? And that that the earth is told, you know, like all our problems, even putting our 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 earthly problems right now in in this context, 
right? That 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 um, you know, whatever percent of scientists nowadays agree that like we're we're um, in a very profound way affecting how the Earth responds to us, and that that can be because of our ignorance, because we've turned away from, and not just the Vedic idea, but in other words, that spiritual idea that's coming through all the all the spiritual traditions, you know, of living simply, of being kind to one another, of saying a little grace before we eat, you know, showing a little appreciation for all the gifts that are being given to us. We've removed ourselves so far from that mentality that the earth is kicking back. Now, that's why gardening, Kastuba, next time you come up mm -hmm. here, Ariana Lindbergh is our super soul uh, official landscape architect, where you're sort of like, you're, you're shepherding the earth. You're, you're, mm. you're, you're, you're not just, you're not wrecking it. You're just sort of being a steward of the earth of the, uh, the gifts of the earth. And uh, when you see a person really into their gardening, they feel so damn connected um, because we have, there's some recognition and appreciation that just goes with that. You can't not have appreciation as a gardener because you're working with them. You're appreciating them. Then you have some faith in them. It's time tested faith. You're trying to give back. You're trying to move plants around in such a way that they can um, work with each other as uh, co in a symbiotic coexistence. Partner you know, planting, Kastuba. Have you heard of that? Partner planting. I've heard of that. Yes, I've heard of that. And you know why that is, Ragnar? Why? Because nature abhors a vacuum. And if we could only walk with sufficient carelessness. We, are, we will surely be filled. It sounds like you're being yeah. filled, my friend. Dust in the wind. <laughs> well, you see why? You got to serve somebody, Kastuba. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Mara, All right. do we have any takeaways? Today? Yeah, we do. We have some good takeaways. All right. Uh, be careless. Be careless. Ooh, that is a be great t-shirt. Okay, you, there you go. Liz with sages, be careless. Yeah, very intriguing. Right. Get the conversation what, started. What is that? Who are these wisdom of the What do you mean by that? It sounds so wrong. How is it right? How is it right? But o overeat. How about that one? Who's the sages? <laughs> overeat. <laughs> Hurt other people. <laughs> what does he mean? Bhagavatam is relentlessly focused. Milk the earth. <laughs> Devotion on? is. It is relentlessly. Fo re it's relentlessly focused on dharmic reversals. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. Reversals. Devotion. Oxford is Nugget. Uh, Oxford yeah. Nugget right there. Thank you. Devotion is the main thing and overrides all else. There you go. I want to see Kostuba dressed in a Mr. Peanut outfit. <laughs> That's, I don't think they wear that <laughs> at Oxford. I don't I think I the, think they do. You, you just have some idea about like classiness in Oxford and Mr. Peanut kind of represents class to you, I think. Yeah. Kind of <laughs> it's going to be classier. It's not even the classiest nut. <laughs> what, could be cla are what could be classier than Mr. Peanut? <laughs> <laughs> Take a leap of faith okay. and hear from Vyasa, Dave. Yeah. Yes. Go. Just listen to what he said. Why would he lie to you? What what does he have? He's a renunciate. He's got nothing to gain from like, okay, let's mislead the future generations. Vyasadeva has the keystone to the vault of spiritual wisdom. There you go. The keystone. In the form of Bhagavatam specifically. Key card. No, you know what I said? I said the combination. combination the combination code. code. To the lock. Of the combination wisdom. code. If we, just one word will suffice. It could be code. It could be combination. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The whole point of Dharma is to develop a higher spiritual love. Yeah. Bring me a higher love. Oh, well, maybe that's where we need to get our lyric from. Right. Stevie Who is that? Winwood. Stevie Winwood. Steve Winwood. Live your life according to principles. Boring. Okay. That's not going <laughs> to That t-shirt's not going to sell. That's good. <laughs> Too obvious. <Wherever> the... <laughs> <laughs> You're done. <laughs> Wherever there is wisdom, we accept it. There you go. Move through the world spontaneously with gratitude. Okay. Follow the sages' guidelines. Control your senses and scrape your tongue. Mm -hmm. And don't go to Jerry Springer Loca. Don't go to Jerry Springer Loca. That's planet. Loka I wonder what the non-Americans are thinking. They, do, they probably don't have Jerry Springer. I, no, I think oh like God. even Europeans aren't that lost that they could They're appreciate you. They, they could wouldn't. never watch Jerry Springer. Oh. 
Only Americans could do that. They like what we do here. <laughs> I know they do. Yeah, you're not missing anything, people. No. Thanks, everybody, for joining don't us. Google what a way it. to start your Monday. Yeah, Google YouTube search Jerry Springer. No, don't. Your... Don't do it. Well, just, for ex- just to see. No. No. Just to see. You get lost in that. 